It took about a month, but I finally got my tweeter adapters slash grills that go into the dash of the Supra. Well, of course they show up, and there were no dimensions posted on these, by the way. And they do not fit my Polk tweeters whatsoever. Those are far too large. They do fit the dash quite nice. So I went on Crutchfield and I was able to find these JL component speakers that have a very, very shallow tweeter and they fit the grill just about perfect. And on top of that, the crossover for these JL speakers is tiny. That's the actual size of it. Versus the crossover of the Polk is massive. I was going to have to find a place for this in the car somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and get these put in the car. The Polks will have to go back on my shelf for several more years until the next project car. There's the passenger in. One thing to note, the grills, they just press down in there. And then the speaker is pretty held in place by the old tweeter, actually. Um, it's magnetically holding it in place. Now, with that said, will that cause a problem with the, the tweeter? I don't think so, but I'll see how it sounds. Now the next project I have for today is this foam. I posted on Facebook looking for a solution. Nobody really had anything other than replace the dash, but I just bought some black touch-up paint. I think I'm gonna put a piece of painter's tape on this grill so I don't get any on it. And I'm gonna put touch-up paint along there so at least it's black and your eye won't be as drawn to it. It's the finished product. I'd say it looks way better. I might be the only person who realizes that the dash is swelling up there once the windshield's in it. All right guys, windshield's in the Supra. So it's uh, actually been one step forward with that and one step backwards with the, uh, the engine here. If you notice, the cams are out of it. In the last video, it's probably hard to tell, but this thing had a ton of valve train noise. Um, it was really bad in person. So I decided to pop the valve covers and check the valve lash and it was a total disaster. I had previously taken this head nearly a year ago to a local machine shop for them to install GSC S2 cams, springs and retainers, and I wanted to convert it to shimless buckets so I could rev this thing really high. Originally, I was gonna order 24 of the same size buckets and they're supposed to tip the valves. Uh, that did not happen. They ended up putting nearly 24 different size buckets in it. I said, whatever, just get it done. They had it for months and I, at that point, I really wanted it back. Um, it was kind of before this whole Supra project got started. I pulled the head originally when it was in my Lexus. Anyways, long story short, they failed to do the job properly. Um, GSC says that your exhaust valve clearances should be 12 thousandths. Just for example, the very rear valve there had over 25 thousandths of a uh, gap, which is just crazy. GSC allows for one thousandths of an inch tolerance on their uh, their specs so it wasn't even remotely close i think i got lucky i didn't run it for long so and, and they were loose so probably no permanent damage but it was super noisy so i decided to fix it i bought new buckets they're here about to slap them in now i don't have any clips of taking this thing apart but i might shoot a couple of putting it back together uh, for the record i did reach out to the machine shop they wanted me to bring the head back, which I'm not wanting to pull this thing off. Not to mention it would cost me at least a head gasket, 180 bucks. Um, the machine shop's like an hour one way away from me. So right now I decided, you know what, I don't want them to touch it. Let me try to put the correct size buckets in it and get the valve lash set correctly and cross my fingers, everything else they did was okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw those in here and uh, hopefully fire it up maybe tonight or tomorrow and I'm really, really hoping it quiets this thing down. ETS intercooler just showed up. They package this thing really, really nice. I'm gonna pull it out of here, take a look at it. 
This thing is ridiculous. I had a CX Racing intercooler on my IS300. The thing was a toy compared to this. This is only the four inch ETS intercooler. It weighs 47 pounds was the shipping weight. I mean, this thing is, wow. Okay, the intercooler's on the car. Threw the bumper on there just to see how it all fits. Bought a universal piping kit. I don't have any way to take weld this yet, so I'm gonna make it work with couplers for now. Give the car a shakedown, and then uh, maybe in the future, buy a welder and try to weld up some real nice looking pipes, or maybe just take it somewhere. I did buy the 97, 98 turn signals. Throw them in the bumper real quick. All right, I just pulled the bumper back off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cardboard off the intercooler and put the crash bar onto the car. So I didn't really film it because I just started to mock up the hot side intercooler piping thinking I was gonna have to do a bunch of cutting and stuff. But honestly, just with the pieces in the box, it worked out pretty good. I'm just gonna have to cut a little straight piece for down here, connect that together and the hot side will be done. So, not a whole lot of footage of that. The cold side is a whole different story. I'm gonna have to drill a hole here. That's a four inch hole saw. I have to come off of here and I don't know how it's gonna work, but I'm gonna get it done. The blow off valve's gonna go over here. I don't have that pipe yet. I just ordered a, a straight pipe with a flange already on it. So, I guess I'm gonna cut my hole and at least get the piping down out of the engine bay and ready to meet up with the intercooler down there. Have my location picked for the four inch hole. It's pretty nerve wracking, but I'm gonna go ahead and send it. When I bought that hole saw brand new at Harbor Freight and I would say it's about a one out of 10. I've used hole saws before and that thing really struggled. We'll get the shop back and clean this up. Probably put something around the edge. I'm not sure what, but I'll put something. I think I need to, need to shorten something here. Oh shoot, it goes way up in there further. So, wow, I think that's gonna work. So that gets me down, maybe a little long. So I might cut down that pipe my blow-off valve has to go in here somewhere, so of course that pipe hasn't showed up. I haven't decided yet how it's gonna go. I just kinda put that in there just to just to see it. But I might end up coming off a of 90 and having my blow-off valve maybe somewhere in here. I'm not sure yet. The lip just came for my bumper. The OEM lip on my old bumper got destroyed actually um, by the body shop, so not reusing it. This is an eBay lip, paid like 150 bucks for it. I guess I lost the footage, but the lip fit perfect. I was absolutely shocked considering it was from eBay. Just got another delivery. I have a precision blow off valve to go on the car. I went with precision mainly because it's a little bit cheaper than uh, tile and it should function exactly the same. I also have this Y pipe. I'm gonna delete the muffler on the HKS high power that's on the car. And I have a an old QTP exhaust cutout that was actually, I bent this plate, it was on my Lexus. So Supra will have an electric exhaust cutout on it. Should be pretty cool. Um, this is the HKS silent high power and it is like shockingly quiet. So the cutout will go in place of this muffler here. I'm hoping it sounds quite a bit better just with this muffler deleted, but we'll see. All right, I'm about to throw the bumper back on the car. All the intercooler piping is done. The ball valve is down there. I think, you know, the portion that you see here in the engine bay looks pretty good. And I'm not saying it looks terrible down below either. I do wish I could weld all of this, but 
Just wasn't in the cards yet. So what's left? Not a whole lot. I'm gonna throw the bumper back on here. I'm not sure if the exhaust cutout's gonna make it on the car before the test drive. Probably not. I'll probably go test drive it first. Um, but yeah, get the bumper on here. I know I need to tighten the drive shaft. Um, oh, I have the relays needed to hook up the radiator fans. That's what some of this wiring here is. But that shouldn't take very long. Um, yeah, not a whole lot left before I can go drive it down the street and hopefully start tuning it, which I plan on doing myself. It will go on a dyno eventually, but I'm going to street tune it for now. The car is pushing a little bit of coolant. I don't know if it's a thing to be concerned about yet, but I'm going to add a nice uh, overflow bottle so I can monitor the level. You can buy these at your local supermarket if you're interested. Went to go test drive the Supra last night and it didn't make it off the lift because the clutch, it disengages almost all the way, but not quite. So I just got a new slave cylinder for it. I think this is the problem. You can see, well maybe you can't on camera, but it's definitely leaking. So I'm gonna throw a new slave cylinder on it, cross my fingers that that fixes this problem and we can go for the, the test drive. Just received my marker lights for the front bumper. These are Depo from eBay. Um, I think these are like the JDM style. I went with clear. Let's get them on the car. That right there I think needs worked. Looks a little weird in the camera because of the reflection from that. But you'll get to see it when I back this thing out again. I have everything here to build my relay setup for both cooling fans. I'm going to independently control them. Not really sure if I need to, but I have two outputs set up on the Infinity for it, so might as well do it that way. That's actually going to be it for this video. I'd intended to post the test drive along with this, but seeing as we're up to 12 minutes, I think I'm going to make that its own video along with the start of the tuning process. I know this video was all over the place with just a ton of random little tasks to do on the Supra, but I had all these loose ends I needed to tie up before we could take that test drive. Uh, the clutch issue, I don't think I said it or showed it on video here, but it has been fixed. I ended up having to adjust my uh, rod going into the master cylinder, so that was a super easy fix, and I did replace that slave cylinder anyways. So I expect to post a test drive in the next week or two, so if you're interested in seeing that, please subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to drop a like. Thanks for watching.